What image comes to mind when you think about a witch? An old wrinkled woman with a big nose and a wart? Maybe she's wearing a pointy hat and flying a broom through the dark night? Or perhaps stirring up some poisonous potion in a big cooking pot? With Halloween right around the corner, chances are that you'll be confronted with this image of witches over and over again. It's imprinted in our minds. But where does this image come from? Let's dive into the visual origins of the witch in this Halloween special of Is This Art? Stories about witches exist in many different cultures and ages. But when people think of witches, they mostly think of Salem, Massachusetts. And if you're a fan of Halloween, Salem is the place to be. In this old town, Halloween is not just a one evening trick or treat event. It's a full month of activities throughout October. The city's link with Halloween originates from the famous Salem witch trials that took place between February of 1692 and May 1693. These witch hunts resulted in the deaths of at least 19 people. Witch hunts were not just a local phenomenon for Salem. Between the 15th and 18th century, thousands of people, mostly women, lost their lives due to witch hunts and witch trials all over Europe and the east coast of North America. It all kicked off in 1485, when the Pope gave a theologist permission to conduct inquisitions in search of witches. In his book, The Malaeus Maleficarum, which means the hammer of witches, he explained that witches were in fact very real and how one could hunt and prosecute them. He argued that witches gained their magical powers because they worshipped Satan, and that women in general were more likely to be seduced by the devil than men. This is the reason why nowadays witchcraft is still mostly associated with women. It didn't take long before people started accusing each other of witchcraft. This often happened after some form of misfortune, such as bad harvests, diseases or even bad weather. And it was next to impossible to prove your innocence when being accused. Witch trial methods included extreme torture, which made thousands of people confess, just to stop the extreme agony. The trials also included bizarre tests, such as the swimming test. The accused were bound and tossed in a body of water to see if they would sink or float. If they floated, it was proof of their witchcraft. If they sank, well, charges were dropped, but of course they would still drown. So in either case, a very effective way to get rid of someone. The phenomenon of witch hunts pretty much died out by the late 18th century. Scholars estimate that by this time, somewhere between 40 and 50,000 people, mostly women, were executed in witch trials. It's interesting that we don't yet see the well-known visual characteristics of witches in their early depictions. Up until the 16th century, there was no particular stereotype when it came to the physical appearance of witches. They could be either young and pretty, or old and wrinkled. And witches were flying around on all sorts of stuff. Yes, on brooms, but also on animals and even decayed carcasses. This all changed when these two prints by Peter Breugel were published in 1565. With them, he changed the image of witches forever. For the first time, we see all the well-known characteristics we still associate with witchcraft combined. Old ugly figures, flying around on brooms, holding magic wands, reading from books full of magic spells, black cats hang around, and always near a fireplace cooking up some magical potion that will turn you into something you don't want to be. The impact of Breugel's prints was immense. They were printed over and over again and spread all over Europe, making Breugel's witches the new standard. They became a source of inspiration for other artists throughout the centuries. By the 20th century, Hollywood was quick to adopt these iconic features for their witches as well. Take The Wizard of Oz with its Wicked Witch from the West. And how about this one? And this one? In all of these movies we see the same visual characteristics that Breugel combined in his prints in the 16th century over and over again. So by the end of the 20th century, our view of witchcraft was pretty much still based on these stereotypes. However, around the 1990s, we see a change in our perception of witches. 
take Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Not so bad, ugly, and old at all. And what about Kiki? Slowly the witch was no longer just a negative stereotype. Writers and artists started to create different points of view on the essence of the witch. But none did this so impactful as J.K. Rowling. She adopted the same visual elements for her Harry Potter series. We see magic potions and books with spells, cats, magic wands, and of course, the iconic flying brooms. J.K. Rowling managed to break with the negative stereotype that has surrounded witches for centuries even further, and turned the world of witchcraft into something so positive that you wish you were part of it. Something unimaginable a few hundred years ago. It takes a great visionary to break with a 500-year-old stereotype. J.K. Rowling's work turned out to be beyond impactful and has changed the way we look at witchcraft forever. Pretty impressive, right? But what do you think? Is this art? Let us know in the comments below whether you think witches can be art or not, and let us know your suggestions for future episodes of Is This Art. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe.